Well, let's just take a look at Iraq itself. It is home to three main sectarian groups, the Kurds, Sunni and Shia Muslims. Well, the research group D3 Systems interviewed just over 2,000 Iraqis and asked them whether they were satisfied with how democracy is working. And the survey found that 63% of Kurds, who are mainly in the semi-autonomous Kurdish region in the north, were satisfied with the state of the country's democracy. Now, this compares to 46% of Shia Arabs, the biggest group in the country, who were widely marginalized under the rule of former dictator Saddam Hussein, and only 15% of Sunni Muslims who say that they've been sidelined since the 2003 US-led invasion said that they were satisfied with how democracy was working. Well, I'm pleased to say that I'm joined by Matthew Warshaw, the Vice President of D3 Systems, the research company behind that survey. Thank you very much for coming in to talk us through this. So the findings there pretty much echo what we come to expect with the way that, um, that Iraq is divided into its groups. Yes, I think we've been watching this for many years. We've been doing polling since 2004, but really since July 2002 until recently May 2014, the last study, we've seen increasing dissatisfaction among Sunni Arabs, uh, while well, uh, Kurds are increasingly isolated and not feeling part of the central government as well, and only the Shia population feeling any buy-in with the current al-Maliki government. And uh, Matthew, one of the things that President Obama was stressing just there, that the government needs to work for everybody, but mm. what some of the findings that your survey has found that the different groups, they have very different needs and very different perceptions of where Iraq is going. I think the most difficult problem is this is a, a huge political crisis that's overlaid over ethnic, social, and economic tensions throughout the country. The, the Kurds have a much more secure region that they're living in. They're not as worried about security. They're more concerned about economic pressures and economic items, well as uh, Shias are more concerned, especially in the South, about services such as electricity. And yet for Sunnis, the overwhelming concern is security. They are most concerned about are they safe? and will they be able to be safe in the future with a, a government that doesn't feel inclusive to them. And when it comes to the government, one interesting question that you were asking in your survey, whether you believe that um, decisions made by the Iraqi government are legitimate and thus binding. Of course, mm. we know that the Kurds very much, they want an autonomous state. So again, very different aspirations. It's very, very different. And I, I think that um, once again, the Sunnis the least likely to feel that decisions made by the central government were legitimate and therefore binding. And, and Kurds also being somewhat discouraged by that. Only the Shia who have the majority within the current government feeling that there's legitimacy there. So there's an enormous political problem and I think that President Obama talked about the great need for an inclusive approach and I think only Iraqis can provide that for themselves. They need to be the ones that come together and find a way to, to include these different groups and find a way to form a government that can represent these minorities in the country. And Nouri al-Maliki is now holding meetings with different groups, but it feels a little bit too little too late. It may be. Uh, it's a very difficult situation. The elections gave his party 92 seats, but he needs 163 to have a majority, and it's not clear that all of the other Shia parties would line up with him at this point. So whether or not he's able to bring together a coalition for 163 votes is a question. Well, we shall watch and wait. But for now, Matthew Warshaw, thank you very much for talking us through your survey. It's been fascinating. Thank, thank you, you for, for your time. Us.